We are at the Apopka Card Show right outside of Orlando, Florida. I just got off work. Let's see how we do at the show. done here in Orlando. I grabbed this huge vintage card lot for $17.50. Yeah, check these out. Spent the rest of the show for deal number two, just going through a 1956 set. I had two subscribers reach out recently looking for commons to build out. So I grabbed this lot for one subscriber, NYC Taper, 18 total cards. Then Jay's fan, I found 63 that he was looking for for his set. Also in this deal, I picked up some cards for myself. So we got a 69 Bob Gibson, a Playball Carl Hubble, and then some music cards as well. Elvis, and then three Chew Bops. Don't know if they're technically considered a card, but some people do. So we grabbed all of that. Super excited to help out some subscribers with their sets as well. And if you guys want to have a set that's being built, email me. It is down below and I'll try to help you find some comments. Just finished up the show. It's almost 8.30 now. My flight leaves in 12 hours. So I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. State number two, it is in Kentucky. We're in a hotel lobby. There's a pool, it smells like chlorine. We got a basketball hoop, arcade, and the card show over there. Let's see how we do at the show. First deal done here in Kentucky. I got this card lot for $540. A lot of stars of today, plus Vlad Guerrero's dad. All right, we picked up the same card as Ryan. Miguel Cabrera 04 Upper Deck Sweet Spot Auto. Got it for a steal. Uh, sticker was only 50 bucks. I thought it was a good deal and Ryan bought the other one, so. Fun time here. Next pickups here are two music cards. I have an early Alice Cooper from 1970s, and then also a 1979 Warner Brothers Fleetwood Mac. Now this is technically considered a rookie card of Fleetwood Mac, even though they have one in 72 as well, because this is the most famous lineup of the band. Here in Lexington, got this two autograph card lot for 140. Freddie Freeman, back when he was with the Braves. This is a heritage auto, those are kind of tough. And then Pete Rose, he does sign a lot, but this is flawless and it's a super high end brand. What do you think of the show today? Uh, typical Lexington show, uh, people packing up at 1230. Um, I live here in Louisville, or I live in Louisville, but uh, I come to the Kentucky shows pretty often, so. Always good to see the people that I uh, associate with here in Kentucky and you know see friends and hang out and it was, a, it was a good show. We got Miguel Cabrera autographs and it was a fun time. The one thing I will say though is all the dealers here were very firm on their sticker prices. They wouldn't move with you. And there was a lot of cards I saw that were kind of overcome. So it's kind of tough from a buying perspective of the show. Also tons and tons of modern, very little vintage. Today we are at Muller High School in Ohio, which is right outside of Cincinnati for a big vintage card show. What's also really cool is this high school had Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Larkin play on their baseball team. So let's see what type of pickups we can get today at the show. Deal done okay, here in Cincinnati. I got this four card lot for $20. There's three G-Men of Pretty Boy Floyd and also a 1963 Topps astronaut, Alan Shepard. Just 
picked up this 1921 Tris speaker. Now it's authentic, it is trimmed at the top. If you guys watch some of my older card show vlogs, I picked up a W575 that actually uses the same exact image as this card. But I picked it up for $175. Join this card show vlog, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That way I can go to a card show in all 50 states. Another pickup at the show is this actually Nolan Ryan poster. If you guys don't know, I have a cat house being constructed right now and one that's finished, I will have a fully dedicated card room. And this Nolan Ryan looks sick. So I'm gonna get that framed and put on the wall in my background. Got 70 more 1956 cards, so approaching like 180 or 200 for the weekend, which super stoked for. Next, we got a 1935 Hank Greenberg. This is actually his second card as a 34 Gaudi. Really, really expensive, but this is affordable for a lot of other people. Then we got a 1957 Cons of Frank Robinson. Now the bottom is trimmed off. Some people did that because they don't like the advertisement, but still, a ton of Frank Robinson collectors out there. And then what I thought was cool, we're not worth a ton, but a bunch of altered 1933 Gaudis. Like you can see the Lefty Grove is missing two corners. The other ones over here are all easily trimmed. But for such an expensive set, people do want to have some lower graded options or authentic cards. And this is that opportunity for them. So all that for $820. That's it for the show. See you next week, Jacksonville.